Hey, it's you. Come on in. There's something I wanted to show you. In fact, there's something that I could really use your help with. You see, I have these poker chips. And I need help organizing them. Any ideas? Let's just start by organizing them by color. Putting them into stacks based upon similarity with others. And... Done. But I feel like we could do better than that. Let's count them. I have 10 red, 2 black, 6 green, and 5 blue. Well, how many is that total? That is 23 poker chips. And of course, now that they're neatly organized into stacks, I can separate them. And we can do some comparisons. The first thing that I notice is that the stacks are different sizes. In fact, this stack is a lot taller. Any idea why this stack is so much taller than these? It's because there's more poker chips in this stack. I know it sounds easy, but that's something really important. The greater the frequency, the greater the amount, the taller that stack is going to be. And that allows us to make comparisons just by sight. So let's review what we've learned. We have four categories or colors of poker chips. We know how many are in each category. And by adding them all up, we know how many we have total, 23. And by comparing the size of the stacks, we know which stack has more. So really what I've done is created a frequency distribution. And that is gonna be our topic for this week. Let's move from poker chips to another way of thinking about frequency distributions. I have an interesting research question. What is the best golf ball? And I would like for you to help me answer that question. What do you think is the best golf ball? Now, the first thing that you might want to ask me is, what do I mean by best? How am I defining the word best when I say best golf ball? Now, that is an excellent question. You want me to operationally define this thing that I am calling, quote, the qualities of the best golf ball, end quote. It is quite possible that what I mean by best is different from what you might mean by best. Maybe I think the best golf ball is the one that I can find easily when I'm off in the rough at the edge of the golf course. Maybe for me, the best golf ball might be one that is bright orange, floating, and has a GPS tracker inside. But that is because I play terrible golf on some beautiful courses. You, you on the other hand, maybe you play golf really well. So the best golf ball for you is the one that flies the furthest, or lasts the longest, or flies the straightest, or some other important quality for you. So for the purpose of this research, we're going to define best golf ball as the one that flies the furthest. And now that we have operationally defined our dependent variable, how are we going to do this research? Well, the first thing we might want to consider is what is our population? The population is the larger group about which we want to know something. That would be golf balls. We want to know something about all golf ball brands that are available for purchase. Now, of course, that is a lot of golf balls. And we have neither the time, the money, nor the inclination to test every single golf ball in the world. And the good news is that we don't have to. As long as we have a representative sample of golf balls to test. We know that because of standardized manufacturing procedures, golf balls have very little variability. Every golf ball in a brand is pretty much like every other golf ball in that brand. That minimizes the variability within our golf balls, and any golf ball in our sample is likely to be like every other golf ball in the population. So, where are we going to get these golf balls to test? 
I suppose we could write to the golf ball company. Tell them we're doing a scientific test. Ask them to send us some free golf balls. Now that might sound great at first, especially if you like getting free golf balls, but there's a major problem with that strategy. What do we want to know in our research? What we want to know is the best golf balls available for purchase. And what would we be testing with our free golf balls? The best golf balls that the company will send us when we tell them we're doing a scientific test about their golf balls. They may not be the same golf balls as what we could purchase. At least, we should not assume that the subjects chosen for us are equivalent to those that we randomly select. So we need to purchase our golf balls, not get free ones. We want to randomly sample the golf balls, not have someone else pick them for us. So what we do is select four different brands to test. We plan to sample 10 golf balls from each brand. Perhaps we choose the top four rated brands, but we do not simply buy 10 golf balls. Instead, we buy a whole case. And then we sample 10 golf balls randomly from each case for our actual experiment. All of the random selection and random sampling makes it more likely that we will get a representative sample of golf balls. And while we're thinking about randomization and standardization, what is another source of variability in how far a golf ball flies? The golfer. If we select a human being to drive each of the golf balls, that person will not swing the golf club exactly the same way every time. That means that part of the distance that the golf ball flies is due to random error. And how could we minimize that random error? We could use a machine called Iron Byron. It is a golfing machine that has been designed to create the same swing every time. Iron Byron could help us standardize the golf swing and minimize random error as well. So we have this big red machine, Iron Byron, drive 10 golf balls from each of our four manufacturers, and then we measure how far each golf ball flew. And here is what we get. So, what is the best golf ball? The first thing you will notice is that all of these data points are a little hard to read. They're difficult to compare. At the very least, it takes you a little time to look through each column assemble them in your brain, and then make a judgment call about which brand is best. This raises the question then, how can we organize and summarize these golf ball data in a way that better shows which golf ball flies the furthest? What we have just discovered is the problem with raw data. Those data in the table are raw. They are just as we collected them but they are not ready to be served up to the public. They are too difficult to interpret in that form. Just like if we have raw meat and raw vegetables, we need to prepare them before they are served. And we will do the same thing with our data. As scientists, we will prepare them to be served up to colleagues or to the public for scientific consumption. I need to make an important point here. I'm using this metaphor of food preparation, but I do not mean to suggest that we are cooking the books or cooking the data in a negative connotation. We're not making things up. We are not presenting only the data that tell us what we want to hear. We are preparing the raw data using established techniques that are transparent so that anyone else can see exactly what we did. We are making the data easier to understand, but preserving the integrity of the data. We want people to be able to make well-informed decisions based upon what we find. Now, there are two ways that we can serve up these data. The first is with a picture called a graphical display. The benefit of a graphical display is that it shows the shape of our data. For instance, With a histogram, we can tell how closely the shape of our data match a normal curve. In this case, not so well. We will learn how histograms, box plots, and stem and leaf diagrams can be used to graphically display our data to make them easier to comprehend. A second way that we can serve up our raw data is with a numeric summary. For instance, 
We may want to know how many male and how many female students answered our survey. Perhaps we want to know what was the average age of all of our participants. Or perhaps we want to use both of these variables and examine the average age of males along with the average age for females. In each of these examples, we are looking for a number that tells us something about the center of our data. We can use measures like the mean, median, and mode to find out what numbers are most representative of all of our data. These are called measures of central tendency, and they tell us where the center of our data tend to be. We also want to know about the dispersion of our data. How spread out are the scores? The same average has very different meanings when the rest of the scores are very spread apart instead of being very close together. If we survey some people and we find that their average age is 20, that is more useful when we have surveyed college students and 89% of them are between the ages of 17 and 22 years old. Most of our survey participants are very close to the age of 20. But if we survey people at a baseball game and we find that their average age is 20, we might also discover that 95% of them are between the ages of 6 and 39 years old. Now, our average of 20 is not as useful because many people are much younger or much older. We will measure the spread or dispersion of scores using techniques like the range, variance, and standard deviation. So, let's use these techniques to serve up our golf ball data and see if they are easier to understand now. I have created a bar graph with averages printed on it so that we can see our data more clearly. Now, what is the best golf ball? It probably took you very little time to determine that brand C flies the farthest. And you can use this data to make an intelligent, informed decision about your golf ball buying habits. Yes, brand C flies the farthest, but it's also the most expensive. Brand D, on average, flies 20 yards shorter, but it also costs one third of what brand C does. So if you were like me, perhaps you might determine that the random human error of your golf swing means that that extra 20 yards is really not worth the cost. If you were a pro player, on the other hand, in tournaments potentially making millions of dollars, those 20 extra yards could well be worth the cost. With good quality data served up properly, we can decide whether it is worth the extra cash to buy a certain brand of golf ball. And this is what we want to do with statistics. We want to be able to serve up the data in a way that gives other people the opportunity to make the best decisions based on what we have found from our data. Music